everybody to Jazz on J Street. My musical journey, my father, my heart and soul, he introduced me to jazz. He was in the military, he used to bring home those big reels of music and I'd listen to him. And he always said that um, every day is good with a cup of Nancy. He loved Nancy Wilson. So fast forward, um, I used to be a, a national XM radio talk show host and uh, did that for about seven years. And um, the name of my show was called Greatness by Design. And so when I think of greatness, a lot of times those are these incredible musicians. And so some of the jazz musicians that I had an opportunity to talk to live was Quincy Jones, um, Nancy Wilson, Layla Hathaway, George Duke, um, wow, Diana Ross, she's not, all, she's not only jazz, but, um, but just all these amazing people. My favorite, I have to say, was um, Sonny Rollins, because I spent a lot of time with him. But it was illness that actually brought me to the flute. And that's a whole story of me recovering. While I'm recovering, I hear a spirit saying, go get a flute, go get a flute. And so I went and got a flute. I'm like, OK, I got the flute. And now what? And then spirit brought me to my teacher, who is Melton Mustafa Jr. And he is a national, um, also another Grammy-nominated music educator. And his father is Melton Mustafa Sr., who is an icon in jazz, who's played with all the greats. So spirit just led me where I'm supposed to be. And so while I'm here, I'm just, I'm loving it. I think it's a mixture of all things. Um, Depending on what the event is, it depends on the crowd. Uh, jazz, as you know, because you were in attendance, tends to garner an older crowd at the beginning, and then as the night goes on, the crowd gets a little younger because they come out a little bit later. Um, for the book events, it tends to skew a little bit older uh, for the people who want to actually hear what an author has to say. Uh, the open mics, whether it's the one that Quota does or the Poetry Slam that we do at the end of every month, those tend to skew a little bit younger. Um, the performance poets, which happens monthly, tends to split the age range between the two. They get a lot of young people who come to do the open mic portion at the end, and a lot of established poets who come to hear their peers speak, and they tend to be 40 plus. Um, for the 20 to 40 crowd, it's really difficult to say what they're going to be interested in. We did last year, and I'm hoping to launch it again in January, we did Lake Worth Speaks which actually gathered a crowd across the spectrum from 15 all the way up to literally one lady was 98 years old that came to tell the story. There has been a move in the book industry of the last 10 years, mostly due to Amazon, um, of the devaluation of books. Um, and in some part of that, you've seen a consolidation of authorships. People who cannot afford to write will no longer write. You have to be able to make money doing what you're doing. Um, so it's causing some havoc. Um, as far as Lake Worth Beach goes, there is a huge crowd here that loves to read. And it makes a big difference when you get kids coming into the store that maybe have never had the opportunity to go into an actual brick and mortar bookstore. And it's kind of like, oh my god, I don't even know what this place is. What is all these things? And then you get a chance to talk with them. Their parents want them to read the classics that they read when they were a kid, but they might not be interested in that. So you get this opportunity to talk to children, what do you like? And to see a kid's eyes light up when you touch on something that just hooks them into reading, because you know that you're benefiting them in the long term. In Lake Worth Beach, I think it's more important than ever, especially since the town is very divided. Uh, where people tend to congregate. You have the Spanish people over here. You have lower income white people over here. You have lower income black people over here. You have higher income mixed over here. And then, of course, you have the well-to-do over here. Um, bookstores have the ability to bring people of diverse backgrounds together. Number one, to share a love that transcends race, culture, age, ethnicity, or any other label that you would care to stick on it. Number two, people that I might not ordinarily run into on a daily basis. I can cross paths with here and actually have a conversation in an environment that lends itself to civility and open-mindedness. 
And sometimes you do get people who don't fit that mold, and that's okay. They have every right to be that way. But at least here, we encourage that. We encourage an open exchange of communication, ideas, even if we don't necessarily agree at the end of the day, at least we had that. And books have the unique ability to be a different thing to every single person. And so I started um, going to jam sessions from Miami to, to up to Jupiter. And so I decided, you know what, maybe I can get something a little closer to home. And so I went to um, one of the musicians that I'd been hearing at another jam session. And he lives in Lake Worth, not far from where we are right now. His name is Jeff Abbott. So he's our founding uh, leading musician. So I went to him and I said, Jeff, I got an idea. I'm gonna do a jam session in this gallery. So, you know, would you, would you go, would you support it? And he was like, yeah, cool, cool, yeah, definitely. So um, after that, then I went to the gallery, which is the Clay Glass Metalstone Gallery. And I talked to uh, Joyce, Greenberg, and she said, sure, and there it is. There's that cue of the music, and the music was born. There it is. So Jazz on J Street started, and that was March of 2016.